everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are making this super sassy summer bikini. This is so adorable and a lot of fun to make. We are starting out by making the top and then we will go into making the bottoms. But before we start, I want to get all the supplies uh, told to you and then also uh, answer some frequently asked questions that I get about these items that I do crochet. So the first things first is the yarn. This yarn is so fabulous. It is Willow's yarn or Willow yarns, sorry, Willow yarns ripples. Okay, this is the label it came with. These come in 110 yard balls. You will need four of them. So I would assume you'd probably need about uh, a little less than 500 yards for this project. I only had this much left out of the, all four balls that I've used. But look at this yarn, you guys. It is so beautiful. It has a fast variation, so it changes color very quickly, and it just has a really cool uh, ply to it, actually. Uh, it comes apart pretty, sim pretty easily. Uh, it has a nice stretch to it as well. So I really, really like this yarn. I, um, this yarn is in a cotton and polyamide so you can get anything that is a cotton blend or a hundred percent cotton for this uh, project if you cannot get this specific yarn willow yarns ripples in the color friendship you can get any other yarn that is a cotton blend or um or in bamboo or something like that because uh, I would not do this project in a polyester just because uh, it may sag once it gets wet it may not absorb the water right or anything so I got this uh, cotton blend that will absorb water and it won't you know sag or like get all weird in the pool or at the beach so that's the yarn we are using and these uh, this yarn comes in really cute little balls of yarn and you can easily use it easily access it so uh, that's what the yarn we are using today but like I said you can use any type of cotton blend yarn I wouldn't go too thick on the yarn though because uh, this is this one is pretty thin I don't think it has a number on here but we'll do measurements and I'll show you uh, the measurements and the gauge and everything so this is the label though so we will need about 500 yards of this okay then uh, the other supplies we need are going to need a sewing needle and some thread for sewing something we're going to be needing some fabric this fabric I'm using I just have a little swatch here but the fabric I'm using is a microfiber blend. This is going to be the liner for the crotch of the bottom and then the cups for the top of the bikini. So you'll need some type of liner. You can use a cotton liner. They actually do specifically sell swimsuit liner at a fabric store. So you can even ask uh, the clerk or something at the at the shop you can get some type of fabric you want it to be kind of stretchy this is a spandex uh, mixture here so you want to get something stretchy something that is thin that will uh, line your piece so like but you know you don't you don't have to line your piece but I am going to just for peace of mind kind of thing so this is a swatch of what fabric I'm using today as you can see on the inside of here I have lined it and on the back side of here I have lined it okay so that's what we're going to do today and we are going to use the thread and needle but if you have sewing experience if you have a sewing machine you can totally use that as well we are also going to be using uh, these sewing pins because we're going to pin down our fabric before we sew it on just to keep it in its spot but again you don't need to really do that if you don't want to those are optional items. The main item, it, the main supply we need is our crochet hook, which I'm using a three millimeter. There, you can see it, three millimeters, okay? So it's a super tiny hook here, so small. So make sure that you have that. I would recommend either, if you don't get this type of hook, this is a bamboo hook that I had gotten for a gift, but if you uh, do not have this three millimeter hook, you can get um, 
a 3.5 millimeter hook. I think they make a 3.25 millimeter hook, which is a D size hook. Correct me if I'm wrong, please leave a comment. But uh, there are smaller hooks. The smaller the hook for this project, the better, because you don't want super loose stitching on this. You want it to be a pretty tight stitch so you're not seeing through your piece or anything. So. Uh, this is a good size hook to use, the 3 millimeter. We are also going to need a yarn needle and a scissor just to, when we cut our yarn and sew in our ends, those tools always come in handy for every crochet project that we make. So those are the supplies we need. Now, for the frequently asked question, oh, and you know what, for, for just for easy tips on this uh, liner here, when we line the items, it's like, how do you cut this to be perfect and blah, blah, blah. What I ended up doing, let me grab this real quick here is I cut a piece of paper and I measured this on the piece of paper and then I cut the piece of paper and then I, I put this on the fabric and stenciled it around it. So you can use paper, you can use some type of stencil to uh, cut your fabric. Totally up to you. But that's just a little tip that I use because this fabric is really stretchy and it's really difficult to cut and especially in straight lines, <laughs> so I ended up uh, using a piece of paper as a stencil. So now, on to measurements. Let me grab, oh my goodness, I don't have my measure guide, so let me grab that and I'll get you the measurements ASAP. All right, sorry about that. I grabbed my uh, measure tape, it was in the other room. <laughs> so now measuring this piece, uh, now you can, in this video I explained to you that you can make this as big or small as you want, okay? This is a very versatile pattern. You just increase to where you wanna end it and uh, you can stop at that point. And then you can make as many rows of a non-decrease to make this upper part. All of this doesn't make sense right now, but it will, I trust me. So across this front here, this measures 10 inches, okay, just this front part, 10 inches across, and the back part with, with the ties not on measures, let's see here, let's start on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 about 18 inches, okay? Now these ties allow you to have this to be bigger or smaller. You just uh, tie this loose or tight to make this uh, size bigger or smaller, okay? So these ties really help with sizing as well. From the top down, okay? You can see the middle of the crotch area right here is about nine inches, okay? If we went all the way around to the other side, it's about 25 inches, okay? So I kind of just flipped this around and measured it all the way around. You can do that measuring, okay? And uh, for the gauging, let's measure a few of these stitches. You can see here, if you zoom right in there, you can see about one inch has about one, two, three, four, five stitches in one inch, okay? One, two, three, four, five stitches in one inch, okay? So that's pretty much my gauge. For rows, you can zoom right in there. How many rows to an inch? About three. One, two, three rows per inch. So there's a good gauge for you on uh, making this if you need to buy different yarn if you can't access this yarn. For measurements for the top, let's set this aside here, I'll measure the top piece, these triangles. Now like I said you can make these as big or small as you want. Across it's about seven inches here, okay, and from top to bottom it's also about seven inches. Okay, so it's a pretty good even square, or I'm sorry, even triangle. Gosh, what is wrong with me? Okay, so even triangle, uh, but you can make this as big or small as you need it to be. So there's our top, and then this bunches up like that, which is really cute. Now for the for around the chest area though, this tie, you can make this however big or small as you want because it's just a string and it will t wrap around you and you can tie your bow. So uh, that I'm not going to measure because you can make that as big or as small as you want it to be. Also these 
top uh, chains here, this tie up here for the around the neck, like a halter top, that you can make as big or as small as you want it to be as well. So those ties are very versatile. You can make this as big or small as you want. So I'm not going to measure those for sizing. So there's our swimsuit. Now, before we start, I do want to mention there are links in the description of this video. There is a link to my blog, yarnutopia.com, where you will get the written pattern for this. I will try to write everything as clear as I can, but if you can't understand the written pattern, just come over to this video and watch the portion of that part of the video where you're stuck on. There's also a link in the description of this video to my Facebook and Instagram. Make sure that you follow me on both places. So go click like on Facebook and click follow on Instagram. And make sure if you share your photo on Instagram, hashtag YarnUtopia. I would love, love, love to see your summer projects and your summer swimsuit. So make sure you hashtag YarnUtopia on Instagram so I can see that. Also, uh, if you uh, would like to make this item and share a photo, share it on the wall on Facebook and go check out the wall by others, uh, the posts by others on the Facebook so you can see others posts and there get inspiration for your next project and whatnot. Also check out the uh, links, let's see here, there's a link to, well there's not a link, it's the, my username for my Snapchat is in the description of this video, it's Yarn Utopia, you can follow me on Yarn Utopia, or on Snapchat as Yarn Utopia, and uh, snap me your photos. I love seeing all your snaps and seeing what you're doing, what's on your hook, so make sure you check that out. Follow me there, you can see behind the scenes clips of what we do here at Yarn Utopia headquarters, aka my home. You can also subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, I have to say a huge thank you to to my dad, Fouad Azmat, for taking the time out to make these videos with us. He's our videographer, editor, and photographer for all of our videos. Oh my goodness, I can't breathe. So <laughs> make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can get the update on when he posts our next video. Also, make sure to check out my channel here on YouTube. If you go on the right-hand side, if you scroll down a little bit, there is a blue button that says support. Make sure to click that support button and support us in any way you can so that we can keep bringing you fantastic crochet tutorials because this is... I love doing this and I couldn't do it without your support so make sure you do that and for those of you who have already supported us your donations are greatly appreciated and it's what we do here so thank you thank you thank you so let's get started and making this super sassy summer bikini Let's start off by making a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end and then fold that down and pull it through Okay, and then insert your hook and we can start. So to start off, we're going to start by chaining 20. So uh, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Now we are going to double crochet into the fifth chain from the hook and in each of the next 14 chains after that. So the fifth chain from the hook. So the loop on the hook doesn't count as anything. So count one, two, three, four, and five. Right in here, we're going to yarn over Okay, what I usually do is look at my chain like this. I'm going to actually turn it toward me so you can see these back ridges here, just like so. I'm going to work in these back ridges. You can work in the top loop, or the top, uh, loop right there or uh, through both of these loops, um, this front loop here and this back loop here. You can work in either one of those, totally fine. But just yarn over once, go into the fifth chain. So one, two, three, four, five. This chain right here, go in. So I'm gonna turn this toward me, go in. Yarn over, pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two loops. And then yarn over and pull through two loops. 
Okay, that's a double crochet. Just like that. So now we're going to double crochet into the next 14 stitches. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, yarn over, go into the next chain. Okay, these are going to be quite tight. You want your stitches to be super tight on this part. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, and just keep doing that all the way across in each chain and then once we get to the very last chain I'll meet up with you because we're going to work a bunch of stitches in there and then work on the opposite side of our foundation row. So I'm just going to double crochet across this and then I'll meet you up at the, at the last stitch. When you have one chain left you want to put three double crochet in there so yarn over, go into that chain the very last chain that you have here on this row here. We're going to put three double crochet, so one, going back in for two, and going back in for three. Then we're going to chain one, so yarn over, pull through, one, and then we're going to put three more double crochet back in there. And you can kind of see here, I'm turning this upside down because now I'm going to work on our foundation row this way, okay? And I'm also going to work over this straggler here. So in the same stitch, in the same chain that we worked those first three double crochets in and chained one, we're going to put three more double crochet in there. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so that's one, two, and three. Okay, and now we're just going to double crochet across here. So you can see here, there's our slip knot from the beginning. We're going to go right into this next one right here. Okay, because we already worked into this one, these six stitches. So now we're going to work into this next one here, yarn over. We're double crocheting across our foundation row. Okay, this part will probably be a little tricky for you if you made your stitches quite tight in the first uh, few rows or in the first row or whatever. So just make sure that you get your double crochets. There should be 16 across here. So just uh, double crochet in the next 16 stitches. And then once we get to the end, we'll chain up three and go on to row two. Alright, I'm just putting my last double crochet in here. At the end of row one, you should have 38 double crochets. Okay, so if you have to count back, it will be around here. Okay, all the way across here, around here, and all the way around here. Including this stitch right here. This counts as a stitch. Okay, it's like our chain of three basically of what it would be of this row. So count all the way around. You should have 38 stitches including that piece right there and one chain one space over here. So you can count that. Going on to row two, we are going to, this is our repeat row now, so we're going to chain up three. One, two, three, we're going to turn our work this way, so flip it around just like that, and then we're going to double crochet in each stitch until we hit the chain one space. So you're going to go right into this stitch right here. Okay, so this stitch, this chain of three counts as a stitch, so we don't have to work anything in here. So we're going to go right into this next one right here, and we're going to put a double crochet. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. So we're just double crocheting in each stitch across until we hit the chain one space, and then I'll meet you up at the chain one space and I'll show you what to do. All right, I'm just finishing, oops, I'm just finishing up this uh, side here and then I'll get you to the chain one space. Okay, so now in the chain one space, we are going to put 
our stitches. We're going to put a uh, two double crochet, so yarn over, go into the chain one space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and again, yarn over, go back in the chain one space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then we're going to chain one, so yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to put two more double crochet back into that same chain one space. So one and two. And then we're just going to double crochet into each stitch on this side, this other side here, okay, going around. Okay, and then that's our repeat pattern. So at, at every row, we're just going to repeat that. So chain up three, turn your work, double crochet into each stitch until you get to the chain one space. And in the chain one space, we're putting two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet all in the same chain one space. It may be difficult. Obviously, I'm having some difficulty with this type of yarn and this hook uh, being so tiny, uh, but you will get there and you'll be able to make this. And then uh, once you get to the end of this row, I'll show you how to do row three, but then I'll let you go on your own to make this part as big as you need it to be. When you're finishing this row, you want to make sure your last stitch goes into this chain up three right there, okay? Because that does count as a stitch. So every time we do a chain up three, that counts as a stitch. So I'm putting my last stitch of this row in that chain up three from the previous row, okay? Just like that. And now we're going to go on to row three. We're going to chain up three. One, two, three. And we're going to turn our work and then just repeat what we did for row two uh, for here and on out. So for, for rows three through ten, just repeat uh, rows uh, num row number two. So yarn over, go in to this stitch right here, okay? So not into this first stitch because, again, like I said, the chain of three counts as a stitch. So that would be into this first stitch here. So now we're going to go into this very next stitch right here for a double crochet. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. And then in, in each stitch across until you hit the chain one space. In the chain one space, we're going to put two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet into each stitch on the other side, the opposite side of this piece. And then just repeat. So chain of three, double crochet until you get to the chain one space. Put two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet into the chain one space. And then double crochet in the rest of the stitches on this row. And then just do that for uh, rows three through ten, or however big you need to make this. If you need to do more than ten rounds or ten rows, you can uh, to get full coverage. That's totally fine. I am going to do up to ten rows and then I'll meet you up and we will go on to the next step of making the strap. Alright, once you finish your rows, I did 10 rows in total, so I finished row 10 here, and uh, you can uh, measure this up to yourself if you need to have more coverage, uh, you can, but you can see here it's starting to cup and it's starting to take shape, which looks awesome, uh, but you can make this bigger or, you know, you could have ended uh, sooner on other rows to make this smaller if you needed to, uh, but we're going to... Uh, you just measure that up to your chest if you need to to make it bigger or smaller. Just keep continuing on repeating that row two to make this. Uh, just double crochet across until you hit the chain one space and then put the two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet in the chain one space and then double crochet all the way to the end and then chain up three and go on to the next row. So that was super simple. Now we are going to do the outline. We're going to just chain one. So yarn over, pull through one, and we're going to turn our work. 
And now we're going to single crochet in each stitch across and we're going to single crochet into this first one because that chain up one does not count as a stitch. So we're going to go right into this first one. Usually we chain up three here and we don't have to work into this one because the chain up three counts as a stitch but this chain up one does not. So we're going to go in to the stitch, yarn over, pull through. Oopsie, let me try that again. Go in, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so that's a single crochet. So we're going to single crochet in each stitch across until we hit the chain one space. So go into this next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So like I said, just do that until we get to the chain one space. I'll show you what we're going to do at the chain one space. We're going to make the shoulder strap. Okay, I'm just uh, finishing this last two stitches here and then I am at my chain one space. And in the chain one space, we are going to put a single crochet. So go see this chain one space here we're going to go into the chain one space yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two loops now to make this strap i guess i said sh shoulder strap this is more of a neck strap because this is going to wrap around the neck like a halter top uh, we are going to chain 100 so yarn over and pull through one two three four five six seven, eight, nine, ten. Just continue working these chains just like so. Count to 100 chains and then once I hit 100 chains I'll meet you up at that point and I'll show you what to do next. Uh, we're going to single crochet across these chains. All right, once you have 100 chains, I'm actually going to chain one more, so I have 101 chains, and then we're going to go into the second chain from the hook and across, we're going to single crochet. And just like how I showed you in the very first part of this video, how I work in these back ridges here, I turn this chain toward me and work in these back ridges, I'm going to do the same thing for this portion. So going in the second chain from the hook, so the loop that's on the hook doesn't count, so count one and two, right in there we're going to turn this toward us and we're going to go into the back loop or the back ridge there yarn over pull through and then yarn over and pull through both of those loops on your hook okay then we're going to hop into the next chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through both loops on the hook okay and we're just going to do that all the way across until we hit back down to the triangular part, uh, back to the chain one space that we worked in. So I'll meet you back up at that point once I have 100 single crochets on this uh, chain here, and then we'll go on to the next step. When you come back across, this is what your chain, uh, your single crochet chain should look like. So this is the strap. Okay, should just be a super long piece here. And let me just uh, single crochet in the last chain right here. And then we're going to single crochet again in the same chain one space down here on our uh, triangular part. So go in and then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, so there is our finished strap part uh, for our neck strap. Now we're just going to repeat what we did on this side for this side by just single crocheting into each stitch until the end. And then I'll meet you up at that point and we will fasten off and we'll make another one of these. All right, just finishing up single crocheting across here and now we can fasten off so uh, we're going to leave this bottom part unworked Okay, this bottom of our triangular part, we're going to leave that unworked and we're going to fasten off here. So we're going to yarn over and pull through to chain one and then we're going to cut this yarn, pull that all the way through and pull it tight. And then we can grab our yarn needle, let's grab that real quick, and sew in this end. 
okay and then you have one half of your bikini top finished so now all you need to do is just if you need to rewind this segment make one of these exactly the same as we just made this one and then once you have the second one made okay, I'm just gonna sew in this end real quick Okay, so you can see I'm sewing in my end underneath this. But once you have the second one made, uh, you can, uh, we're, we'll, we'll actually attach the two pieces. Let me sew in the end so you can see what I mean. Okay, so I just sewed that in with my yarn needle, and then I'm going to cut off this extra piece there. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Okay, with your long strap, this is what it should look like. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is make another one of these exactly the same how I made this one. So if you need to, like I said, rewind this and make another one. And then once I have the second one made, we will uh, make a chain to a strap to go around here, this bottom part, and we'll attach the two pieces. So I'll show you how to do that once I have the second one made. All right, so I have my second one made already here. So you can see that we have two of the exact same pieces, just uh, two triangular pieces with their straps on the top. So now we want to attach them like this so that this bottom part is attached and then we can have a tie to go around the back. So once you have these two finished, you want to grab your yarn here. Okay, and we're going to basically make a strap just like how we made the neck strap. So we're going to grab our yarn here and our hook. We're going to, I'm going to set those aside. We're going to make a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, fold that down and pull that through. Okay, and then insert your hook. And for the back strap, we are going to chain 300 okay with this hook so just yarn over and pull through one yarn over pull through two three four five six seven eight nine ten I obviously won't make you watch me do all 300 I'm actually gonna do 301 uh, because we want 300 single crochet so if you want to you can do a foundation single crochet of 300 or you can chain like me and do 301 chains and then we're going to single crochet across our chain so it's totally up to you whatever step you want to make uh, to do so uh, but I am just going to chain 300 and then I'll meet you up to do the single crocheting part all right once you have your 301 chains this is what it should look like just a big uh, chain here um, now if you obviously need it to make it bigger you just do more chains or if you need it to be smaller uh, do less chains now if you need to just measure this around your body it should be able to go all under your bust and around your body and be able to tie in a bow so if you need to chain more or chain less to make it bigger or smaller uh, but I'm just gonna do the 301 chains and then what we're gonna do is turn it toward us just like we were doing uh, with the neck straps and go in the second chain from the hook and across we're just going to single crochet exactly like how we did with the neck straps on those triangles so just uh, continue working a single crochet in each chain across this chain so you'll have 300 single crochets like I said earlier though if you know how to do the foundation single crochet uh, you'll skip the part of doing the chain actually and then turning your work and doing a single crochet across so you eliminate the chaining part if you do the foundation single crochet uh, you could do that if you know how to do that but uh, just single crochet across this chain if you don't know how to do that and once we are finished with this we're gonna fasten off and weave that into uh, the pieces that we made to make our bikini top okay just finishing my last stitch here on my 300 single crochets that was quite a bit so now we're gonna fasten this off obviously you're gonna if you made your chain bigger obviously there's gonna be more um, chains or more single crochets so but when you want to fasten off this piece just chain one and then cut this yarn 
okay? And then continue to pull that through and pull it tight, okay? And now what I'm going to do, just to reinforce this, I'm gonna tie these two pieces in a knot, but you don't have to do that, I'm just gonna do it. And then I'm gonna sew these two pieces in uh, inside of my stitches here. So let me grab my yarn needle, I'll show you how to do that. So I just tied that into a knot there. And then I'm gonna grab my yarn needle, put this one on there, and then put this one on there as well. Okay, so they're both on my yarn needle. And then I'm gonna go into the stitches underneath them, inside and just go back into it. Okay, so I'm just sewing in these ends. I suggest as you're making this piece to sew in your ends as you go. And then pull that and then stretch it out. Okay, and then cut off any extra that you may have, okay, and those are hidden. So now, uh, but before we put this uh, on our piece, we want to line our piece. Putting this strap on our piece is going to actually bunch up these triangles, making it very difficult to line it. So what I need you to do before we put this piece on is get your triangles, okay, get them both here. And then we're going to take our fabric. Now, you, like I said earlier, you can use any cotton, any microfiber, any... Uh, there, there is actually a specific fabric for swimming suits that you can get at any fabric store that you have near you. So you can uh, get any fabric. I'm using a microfiber blend uh, material today. And you want to outline this piece. So outline the triangle, okay? And then cut your... Uh, piece. So what I ended up doing is actually grabbing a piece of paper and then tracing it around, putting this on top of it, tracing it, and then cutting my fabric using this as my stencil kind of piece. So you can do that, uh, or if you just want to uh, make like small triangles just for this part, or you don't even have to line this. So just fast forward this part and go on to um, attaching the strap if you want to skip ahead on this part. But I'm going to show you how to attach these. So what we want to do is make sure that this is all lined up nicely. I'm using full coverage on this part, so you can see here, but like I said, you can make your triangles small or big, as big as you want them to be, okay? And then I'm just going to pin this down and sew it to this piece. So what I'm going to do is take some sewing needles. I'm going to, I personally like to, a clean edge, so I'm going to fold this under, okay? and then I'm going to pin it, just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna do that all the way around, so just fold this under, and then pin it. Okay, fold it under, and pin it. And what I'm personally going to do is hand sew this to my uh, triangular pieces, but uh, you, if you are, you know, skilled in sewing, you can use your sewing machine if you have one. Otherwise, just follow along here. I'm just going to be pinning this just like this on both pieces, and um, just folding this down, just like this. Okay, and then once I have this all pinned down. I am going to sew it down with a uh, just uh, plain uh, thread and a sewing needle. So it's that simple. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to fold this down and keep pinning and then I'll show you how I'm sewing it. Okay, so once you have it all pinned down like this, we can sew it. Now, like I said earlier, if you have a sewing machine, you can easily sew it. And actually, with a sewing machine, it'll, it'll have a cleaner look to it. Uh, but I did hand sewing, and it's um, it's kind of crude, but not terribly. And, and honestly, nobody's going to see this part. So what I ended up doing is threading a sewing needle, okay? I just threaded it 
uh, with some regular thread here. And uh, now I'm going to sew this on this piece. So I'm just going to start in this corner down here and I'm just going to go in and out and just weave it in and you can try to go as even as you can but just right at the edge there okay and then we can just remove the pins as we go okay and I'm just going to go all the way in just like that okay so you want to just weave it into both layers so we're working in the microfiber piece or our fabric piece and in the crocheted piece. Okay. And we're just going all the way around this triangle. Okay. And just remember this part because I'm not going to show you how to do the uh, lining of the bottoms later. It's exactly the same as this pinning the piece down and then lining it and then sewing it on okay so I don't think that there's a need for me to show you again so I'm just going to show you here okay and I'm just gonna go back and forth obviously I can remove this pin now and it's secure and you can see here how it is secure okay so I'm just going to continue working this all the way around and then once this piece is sewn on I'm going to do it to the other uh, triangle piece exactly like this so pinning down the fabric and then sewing this uh, fabric to it with regular thread sewing thread and then once I have both of those pieces done then we can put this long strap this that we made we can attach the two pieces with that. So I'm going to just sew this on all the way around and then I'll meet you up and we will put that uh, strap on. <laughs> I'm just finishing up here on this edge this last side of the triangle and then once we come back around uh, you can see here I have a straggler here. Uh, if you know how to, you know, fasten off and change or to uh, fasten off your your thread, you can do that. But to show you what I'm doing, I'm just going to take this straggler and make a knot, a few knots actually. I'm going to go around, go back around, and again for a third one. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is take these pieces, cut this off, and I'm going to go around kind of like how I make a slip knot. Okay, so I twist this, and you may need your crochet hook if your thread is really short. You can go in that loop. Okay, so twist it around go in the loop and then hook on the stragglers and pull them through to make another notch. My ends were really short on this one so I'll make them longer on my next one to do that to finish that off. Okay. So I tied that knot there, and then to hide this end, I'm going to take my yarn needle, so my bigger needle, and I'm going to thread that with it, okay? And then, well, if their ends are short, what I'm going to do is actually go into this piece, so between the fabric and the crochet piece, okay? I'm going to go in with my yarn needle then I'll be able to yarn this or thread this put the thread through all of it make sure you've got it all there and then I want to sew this end in so I'm going to stretch this all the way up here poke that through and pull it all the way through and there you can see that it is all hidden Okay. 
So that's what the inside should look like. Now you will see here that it is cupping and there's a lot of air and space in there. That's okay because this inside fabric is really stretchy and that's what's going to stretch around everything. So it will look like that. So now we want to do the same exact thing to the other one. And I already have that done off of camera here. So I have both of these done just like so. So now we want to attach these pieces with this big strand that we just made. So what we want to do is take um, either our yarn, uh, our hook, our crochet hook, or you can use your fingers. And you can see here at the bottom of this, uh, our triangles, you can see these holes where our chaining up and going on to the new uh, rows, uh, so on the sides of our rows. We're going to weave this in and out of these holes, okay? So to do that, we want to start out in the front. So these, this is the front of our piece, and this is the back of our piece. So we want to start out in the front, going in, okay? Going into one of those. And then we're just going to weave it in and out each row. So just push it through there. Okay, then push it through this one. And this part can get a little tedious, but not too bad. Okay, so I'm just going to weave this in and out. And then once I get to the other side of this one, I'll show you how to attach it to the other triangle. And then we'll weave it in and out of that triangle. And then we'll be able to enjoy the top. And then we'll go on to making our bottoms. Alright, once you have it all uh, gone through here, uh, you want it to end on going an outward, okay? And then you want to kind of slide this over so you have more uh, string on this side here. So I'm going to kind of slide this as much as I can. And then we're going to uh, go in, let's see here, so this one is going out. So we want to go in just like how we did for the other one. So go through the front of this next one and just weave it in and out exactly how we did the other one. Okay? Exact. So I'm just going to weave it in and out of this one and you know if you have a better way you know you could uh, yarn a, a or you could uh, put this on a what am I trying to say? A big yarn needle like a darning needle and then weave it through and that might be a little easier for you instead of using your fingers, you know, because sometimes fingers can come in the way and you're not able to get it through these rows. But if you have like a yarn needle or something or a pin, you can like a safety pin, you can or a bobby pin, you can pin it on the end of this and then weave it through very easily. So there are ways to get through weaving this. But I'm just going to weave this all the way across and then I'll meet you up when our top is complete. Alright, so I just weaved this through here and you want to make sure that it is coming out of in the front, okay? So you don't want it to be going, you know, back into and then ending on the inside. You want it to end on the outside, so you can see there. So it's even on both sides, how it's coming out on the front. And now I can turn this over and you can see. And remember how I said earlier when we were trying to sew uh, or pin these uh, fabric pieces on, how this bottom kind of gets bunched up that is exactly what I was talking about so it was it was it would have been more difficult to sew this fabric piece on if this strap was in the piece already so that's why I sewed on this fabric piece when this strap was out so that's um, just a tip just to have when you're making this so then you can push these together make sure your straps are even on both ends and then this is our next strap here so you can tie that and enjoy your top. It looks so cute. So now we have to go on to making the bottoms to match. To start with the bottoms we want to make a slip knot. So start off by putting your short end over your long end then folding that down and pulling that through. Okay, pull tight. Put in your hook and we can start. So to start off, we want to chain, um, let's see here, chain 
16, sorry about that, 16, so yarn over, pull through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, sixteen, sixteen chains here, okay? And then in the third chain, or I'm sorry, the fourth chain from the hook and across, we are going to double crochet. So the loop on the hook doesn't count, so count one, two, three, and the fourth chain here, we are going to yarn over, and remember how I showed you earlier how I turn my chain toward me and I work in these back ridges? That's exactly what I'm going to do. So we're going to yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay? Yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so we're just going to double crochet across this chain, just like that. If you needed to, uh, this is starting the crotch area, so if you needed to make this a little bit wider, you could chain 18 or 20. That's totally fine. Uh, but I am going to, I just chained 16. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to double crochet across my chain, and then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to row two together. Alright, I'm just finishing this row. And now going on to row two, we are going to chain up three. So yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through three. And now we're going to turn our work like this. So now we're looking at it like this. And we are going to put a double crochet in each stitch across. We're not going to put it in this first one right here because this chain of three counts as a stitch and that's in there already. So we're just going to put one double crochet in this stitch here. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. So we're just putting one double crochet into each stitch across, and then I'll meet you up for row three where we start our increases. You want to make sure that you put your last stitch in this last chain up three right here at the beginning of row one. So one, two, three. We skipped those in the beginning and double crocheted in the fourth chain from the hook. So that counts as a stitch. So I'm just going to go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So rows one and two are complete and you should have 14 double crochet on each one of those rows. And this chain of three counts as a stitch, so count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Now going on to row three, this is going to be our repeat row. We are going to chain up three, so yarn over, pull through, one, two and three and again that counts as our first stitch on this next row and we're going to turn our work and we're going to put a double crochet into that same stitch that we just chained up three in so right there we're going to yarn over go into that same stitch yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through two loops and yarn over and pull through two loops Okay, so essentially it looks like there's two double crochet into that same first stitch right there. Then we're going to double crochet all the way across until we hit the last stitch on this row, which will be our chain of three from the previous row. So uh, once I get to that stitch, we're going to put two double crochet in there. So I'll show you how to do that and then we'll go on to row four together. Okay, so, so far we have two double crochet in the first stitch because we have that chain up three and that double crochet, which counts as two double crochets. And then one double crochet in the rest of the stitches until you hit the last stitch, which like I said is the chain up three here. And we're going to put two double crochet in there. So yarn over, go at the top there, and make two double crochet. So one and two. Okay. 
and then we're just going to repeat that. So rows 4 through 33, we are going to repeat row 3. So chain up 3, 1, 2, 3. Oh, also row 3 should have 16 uh, double crochets. So now turn your work and put a double crochet into that first stitch that we just chained up 3 in. Oopsie. Okay, so it looks like there's two double crochet in there. And then put one double crochet into each stitch until you hit the very last stitch and then put two double crochet in the very last stitch. And then uh, you should be increasing two stitches on each row. And then once we get uh, to be finished with row 33, I will meet you up at that point. We're just repeating row 3 for the rest of the, for rows 4 through 33. So once I'm finished with row 33, I'll meet you up. I'll give you some tips on how to make this a little bit bigger, and then we'll go on to making the upper part of it. All right, once you finish uh, row 33, this is what your piece should look like. And uh, if you need to, you can go on to increasing some more if you need to uh, make this a little bit wider. That's totally fine. Or if you needed it, needed it to be smaller, you could have ended sooner. I just needed to increase to about 76 uh, double crochets. So I have on row 33, you should have 76 double crochets. Now, if you need to make it, bigger obviously just put two double crochet in the first stitch and then one double crochet in each stitch all the way across to the other side and then put uh, two double crochet in the last stitch and then chain up three and just repeat that so just basically repeating row three this whole way and this is how it should look it looks like a big V so this is going to cover the back side so now I kind of wanted to have a little bit of a waistband up here so I'm going to be done increasing at this point and I want to make it uh, a little bit taller uh, on the on the waistband part. I'm gonna do about five rows of just chaining up three. So I'll show you here. Yarn over, pull through, one, two, and three, and then turning the work. Okay, and then just putting one double crochet in each stitch across, and skipping this first one because the chain of three is in this first one right here. So we're not gonna go in this one. We're gonna go right into this next one here and we're going to yarn over and go in. Okay, and then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So uh, we're just double crocheting in each stitch across now. So we're done increasing. Once you make yours as big as you want it to be, you can be done increasing. And then we are going to uh, just do a few rows of one double crochet in each stitch across to kind of make a bit of a waistband to come up higher on the stomach. And then um, I'm going to do about five rows. And then once I do that, once I finish, I should come up to be row 36. Let's see here, 36, no, 38. Sorry about that. My math is off this morning. <laughs> once I get done with row 38, I should um, uh, be able to fasten off. And then we'll do the front side of the bottoms. All right, so I just finished row 38 here, so you can see that there is no increase over here. It's just a straight up uh, line here. So you can see how this piece looks so far. Now, you can obviously do more rows if you want to make your waistband a little bit higher, uh, sort of like a pinup style. You can totally do that. I'm just going to end here. But since this pattern is so versatile, you can make this however big or small you want it to be. So. Um, you can see here how it makes the V shape, okay, so you can increase, 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 keep increasing until you're ready to then just go straight up on the, each side, okay, so you can make, and then you can make this part as wide as you want it to be, okay, so now I'm ready to fasten off at this point, so I'm going to chain one and cut this yarn with my dull scissors, <laughs> and then just continue pulling that. Okay, and you know, immediately I'm just gonna grab my yarn needle because uh, the straggler is going to bother me, so I'm just going to sew in this end, and you can see how I sew in my ends. I just take the uh, yarn and yarn my needle with that, and then I go underneath some of these stitches here, and I just go in and hide that. 
okay and there are you know you could go all the way in you can come back around and come back just to secure it so now that baby's not going anywhere and now you can just cut any extra and that's hidden okay so our back side is complete so let's go on to making the front side so what we need to do is turn this around like this okay because we're going to work on here now so this is the crotch area we're going to attach our yarn to this beginning chain up three right here okay and this is our foundation row. We are going to be working across this foundation row. And we're going to attach our yarn. Okay, so just hook it on your hook and pull it through. Whoopsie. Try that again. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, like that. And then we're going to chain up three. So yarn over, pull through, one. Oh my goodness, two and three and that counts as our first double crochet of this row and then we're going to just double crochet across here so in this stitch right here it should be our foundation row chain we're going to go yarn over go in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two okay and just work that all the way across you can also see that i'm working over the top of this straggler this loose end here so i don't have to sew that in later you can leave it and sew it in later or you can do what i'm doing and just crochet around it so that's just a simple step just a small tip for you so um yeah i'm just gonna double crochet across here and so this is now considered row one of the front of the bottoms okay if you are following along with the written pattern on my blog you will see that we are starting the front of the bottoms and this is row one okay so I'm just gonna double crochet across here I'm almost done and then we'll go on to row two all right so I just finished row one here with this chain up three counting as a stitch you should have 14 stitches on row one of the front now I'm just gonna stop here because I have this ugly straggler and I just want to sew this in from the uh, bottoms uh, or from the back side uh, from the very beginning of starting this piece so I'm just gonna yarn my needle and just like I showed you up above uh, up there I'm just gonna sew this underneath some of these stitches just to hide that. Okay. I know a lot of people ask me, how do you sew in your ends? Well, I'm showing you right here. That's that simple. Those yarn needles, though, they come in handy for all my crochet projects. So I suggest you can get one. And there it's hidden. Okay, so now rows two through six, you want to just repeat row one. So chain up three one two three turn your work okay and then double crochet across for 14 double crochet remember do not go in this first one right here because this chain up three is in there so we're not going to go in this first one we're going to jump right into this next one right here and we're going to double crochet across and then we're going to chain up three turn our work and double crochet across and it is going to be 14 double crochets so when i finish row six of the front of the uh, bottoms i'm going to meet you up and we'll start doing our increases all right this is what uh, my six rows look like here so i just double crocheted across chain up three double crocheted across for this part now if you need to make this crotch area a little bit longer you totally can but uh, typically for standard size like underwear styles this is how long it should look from here to here okay so now going on to the next step of making our front we're basically repeating row three of the back side so we're going to chain up three so yarn over pull through one whoops two and three then turn our work we're going to put two double crochet or actually one double crochet in the first stitch because we have the chain of three which counts as a double crochet so it'll look like there's two double crochet in the first stitch so yarn over go into this first stitch right here where the chain of three is yarn over pull through 
yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Then we're just going to put one double crochet in each of the stitches until we hit the very last stitch on this row. And then in that very last stitch, we're going to put two double crochet. And then we're just going to chain up three and go on to the next row. So rows seven through 23 are going to be a repeat of row three of the back side. So if you need to follow along with the written pattern, you can totally do that. Otherwise, um, if you need to rewind this video to see how we did row three of the back side, um, but I'm basically showing you right here, we're just putting two double crochet in the first stitch, which is actually our chain up three, and then a double crochet in the very first stitch, and then a double crochet in each stitch across until the very last stitch, which should be your chain up three from the previous row right here, and then we're going to put two double crochet in there, okay? And we're going to repeat that pattern for the next 17 rows or so, uh, depending on how big you want to make yours, but I'm going to do this until I get to row 23. Once I finish row 23, I'll meet you up and we'll go on to row 24 together. I'm just finishing this row here. So I'm finishing uh, row 23. So this is row 23 here. Now let me put this on the background here so you can see what we did. We did an increase um, just repeating row 3 from the back side of our um, bottoms here. So it now has the front looking like this, like a V, kind of, yeah. And uh, now you can make this however big you need to. If you, you know, you like I'm, I just ended on row 23 doing my increases. This is big enough to cover my front, but you, uh, if you need to cover more, uh, you can just repeat that row, just putting two double crochet in the first stitch, two double crochet in the last stitch, one double crochet in the middle stitches here. That chain up three counts as a stitch, so make sure um, to just then only put one double crochet in that first stitch since that chain of three counts as a stitch. And then you'll have nice clean edges on this piece. So now we still want to continue on working rows. We want to repeat what we did on the back side for these rows here. You can see we stopped increasing for these last five rows. So we want to do the same exact thing on the front, okay? So making five rows uh, just doing, or you can do as many rows as you want for the waistband part. So I'm going to do five rows for mine. You can do as many rows as you want for it to come up onto your stomach area. So I'm going to just chain up three, turn the work, and then just put one double crochet in each stitch across. And since we have this chain up three here, we do not need to put a stitch in here because that chain up three is in that stitch right there. So we just have to go right into this next one here. Just yarn over, go into this next one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Okay, and just put a double crochet in each stitch across, then chain up three, turn your work, and put a double crochet in each stitch across. So on my work, I think I counted 48 stitches. So I should have 48 stitches across for rows 24 through 28. Okay, so I'm doing the next five rows of just one double crochet in each stitch across. So you can do as many rows as you want, but I'm just gonna do five. And for me, it's 48 stitches. So yours, if you're increasing more, obviously you'll have more stitches, uh, but just do for rows, for the next, or for the last five rows on your piece, do one double crochet in each stitch across. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll meet you up. We'll fasten off and we will make our ties to close each side of our bottoms. All right, so I finished five rows of this here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, just no increasing, just putting one double crochet in each stitch across. So this is what your piece should look like when you bring it up to the top. It should get back up to, or line up the waistband here. And then you should see here that it looks like a swimsuit bottom 
or like underwear, sort of. You'll see here that this uh, comes inward and this will be coming like this and will be, you can either sew this or you can follow along to the next step and we'll be making ties. So that on both sides will be coming forward and we'll be making ties for that. But for this part, when you are finished uh, making how wide this piece, uh, this portion is, we want to fasten off. So just chain up one and then cut this yarn and then sew in that end right away. So pull that through, grab your yarn needle and yarn your needle and then sew in this end just like how I've showed you already. Just going underneath some of these stitches. Okay, and then you can even go back so that it's secure. Okay, you can stretch it out and then cut any extra. And there you have it. So now you can decide. This this part is completely creator's choice. So you can either sew this together right here. So what I would do is turn this inside out, fold these together like this, so line them up, and then just either whip stitch it or mattress stitch it or something uh, to attach those and then put it back in right side out and then you should have a clean edge. But if you want to make ties, uh, just follow along here. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to grab my yarn and we are going to make, similar to how we made the chest strap of the top, we're going to make the straps here, the ties. So make a slip knot, so put your short end over your long end, fold this down and then pull this through. Grab your hook. And now we're going to chain 201, or you can foundation single crochet 200. Totally up to you. And really, I mean, you can chain however much you want on this point. We're just yarning over, pulling through. Okay, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. So these are chains. I've showed you quite a few times in this project how to chain. But we're chaining, I'm going to chain 200. You can chain as many as you want. We are going to be lacing up the side on our bottoms and then uh, we are going to tie a bow. So if you need to do more chains or less chains, that is completely up to you. Uh, but I am going to chain 200 and one, actually 201, and then I'll, I'll be single crocheting across, so I'll have 200 single crochets. So I'll meet you up when I have my 201 single or chains, and then I'll show you how to single crochet across, and then we can lace these up the side. Once you have your 200 chains, this is what it should look like, just a big jumble piece there, yep. Uh, so now we are just going to single crochet across. So I have 201 chains here, and now we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and across. So the loop on the hook doesn't count as anything, so count one and two right in here. You can either go into this top part loop right there, or you can go like me and go on the back loops or the back ridges here. I turn this chain toward me and I'm working in the back ridges and we're just going to go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, exactly how we did the chest strap on the top of the bikini. So just a uh, single crochet across each, in each chain we're just putting one single crochet and then you should have 200 single crochet or however many you're making. You can chain more or less, totally up to you, like I said earlier. So just a single crochet across this piece and then I'll meet you up when we're fastening off and we can lace this on our bottoms. All right, doing my last single crochet on here. So now I have 200 single crochet and then we're going to fasten this off. So I'm going to chain one and cut this, oops, cut this, there we go, and then continue pulling that through and pull tight. And what I'm just gonna do, this is just a personal kind of thing, I'm just going to tie these two stragglers in a knot. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to. So I'm just gonna tie these in a knot before I sew them in. Okay, I'm gonna grab my yarn needle and yarn my needle with the two stragglers there, these two loose ends. 
And then I'm going to sew them in just like how I've showed you before. We're just sewing in these ends. Now I need you to make another one of these because we're going to be uh, putting it on each side of the bottom of those openings. Uh, and then while you're doing that, I'm going to line my piece. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Let me just sew in this end real quick. You want to stretch it out cut any extra okay okay and then make another one of these so and then what I what I'm gonna do is actually stretch this out to kind of pull it okay and then I'm gonna set that aside for now because before we tie on our ties we want to line this piece so I'm gonna bring this here what you want to do is make sure you have your outside facing you and then open it up. Okay, this looks like a giant diaper right now. <laughs> but then we're going to line this section here. So I have uh, my piece of fabric cut out. Okay, and you want to line it exactly how we did with the tops. So we are going to, I'm going to turn this a little bit, we're going to fold these under, okay, fold the fabric underneath, and then pin it like this, okay, and then just do it exactly how we did it with the top, just fold this underneath, pin it down with your sewing needles. You don't have to line this if you don't want to, but it is highly recommended to line your pieces. So I'm going to line this up and then I'm just going to sew it on like I showed you uh, for the top. So exactly the same way. Okay, so I'm not even going to show you how to do this because I'm doing it exactly the same way. And then once I have this sewn on I and I have my other uh, uh, tie uh, crocheted, I'll meet you up and I'll show you how to lace up the sides and then we'll be finished. All right, so I just uh, sewed on this scent, this liner here. Uh, you can line the whole thing, uh, the whole back and the whole front, but you really don't need to. Nobody's going to see through this. But make sure you just uh, line this part at least. Or you don't have to line it at all. But it, like I said, it's highly recommended. So I just lined it exactly how I did the top of our bikini, just with hand sewing. But if you want to use a sewing machine, that's totally fine. And now we can... Uh, attach the sides here. So uh, with those two strands that you made, those two ties, you just chained 201 and then single crocheted across so you have 200 chains, we are going to attach those. And the way to do that, we want to line these two up, okay, like this. Okay, I'm going to count down seven rows, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right here. It should be my, an increase row for me. And then we're going to start from the inside, okay, so the inside of our work, we're going to come and put this like this, right? Let me check my other side here. Actually, we're starting from the outside. So we want to go inward, sorry about that, we're going to go in. So I'm going from the outside in, and we're just working around the, the post or around the chain of three from the, from the row there. So go in to your work, and then you want to do it to the other side. So count down seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right in there. We're going to take the other side of the strand and lace it in there. So we're basically like lacing a shoe. That's how we're doing it. And we're just putting it around the last stitch of the row. Okay, once you have those two in, you want to straighten this out and measure it uh, to be equal on each side. So what I usually do is just go like this all the way along. See this one's short, so I want to pull this just a hair. And they're pretty even. Okay, now we're going to do one at a time. We're going to skip a row. Okay, so I'm going to skip this row, and I'm going to take this opposite one and put it from the inside out. Okay, just like that. Okay. 
then we're going to skip a row on this side and go from the inside out with the other strand. Okay. I mean, you can basically line this up and, and lace it however you want, but this is just how I'm lacing it. So now I'm going to go over to this side here. We're going to skip a row right here and go into this one. And then we're going to take this one, skip a row on this side, and go up to this row, going from the outside in. And then we still have one more, so we're going to skip a row on this one right here. And then we're going to go to the very top row. And we're going to lace this in there. Okay, and then we're going to go to the top row on the other side, right here, and lace that in. Okay, now you want to just stretch this out and make sure that your strand is, your lace is all straight, and then you can just tie this in a bow, just like you would your shoelaces or wherever, just like that. So do the same thing to the other side. So now you have it all finished and this is what it should look like. So there you have it. Our swim bottoms are done and our top is finished as well. So we have our whole swimsuit done. Thank you so much for watching and learning how to make these pieces. I hope you can go enjoy the pool and the beach this summer with your fabulous and super colorful swimming suit. You can, uh, you know, make this as versatile as you want it to be. You can um, make it smaller or bigger just by the tips that I shared with you in this video. And you can make these as big or small as you want as well. And with the lining, shouldn't have any worries. It looks so fabulous. I'm so excited about it. So I'm just going to enjoy it now. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to share your photos on Facebook and share your photos on Instagram. Make sure you hashtag Yarnutopia so I can see your work. And you can Snapchat me. Take a quick photo of your finished product and send me a snap for a few seconds. I'd love to see what's on your hook. So make sure you do that. Also, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. And if you liked this video, make sure to go to my channel on YouTube. On the right hand side, there is that blue button that says support. Make sure you click that and support us so that we can keep bringing you these fantastic crochet tutorials. Have a great rest of your day and a happy summer everybody. Happy hooking!